episode, I want to talk about disabling action cable when your user is not logged in. So in our notifications episode, we talked about the idea that you want to have notifications going over your WebSocket, but you don't necessarily want that to happen when the user is not signed in. There's no sense in the browser trying to attack the WebSocket connection and get a connection every five seconds or so because that user is not authenticated and that's why we're rejecting the connection. So how do we go disable this so that the JavaScript doesn't attempt to make that connection when you're not logged in? So as you can see here in the console, we have a whole bunch of status 101 requests, which means that um, it is switching protocols, but it dies right away. And so what happens there is that it's trying to switch to the WebSocket protocol, um, and it just doesn't allow it. So it starts, then it dies. If it succeeds, you'll see that blue line in the network tab. That blue line will go for a long time because it's an ongoing connection. Now, in our Rails logs, you'll see we get unauthorized connection attempt uh, was rejected, and that is correct because the user isn't logged in, and we added that code into the application uh, previously so that when we go into app channels, application cable, and connection, we verify that user, and if the user is not authorized or logged in, then we uh, reject that connection. So the trouble is that the JavaScript isn't aware that we should not try because the JavaScript doesn't know how to determine if the user's logged in or not. And that's typically the case because the JavaScript should never have any idea of the session uh, because that needs to be encrypted. If you didn't have that encrypted, then your users could just impersonate any other user. So how do we actually communicate this to the JavaScript that the user signed in or not? Well, the easiest way to go about this, uh, which I would recommend, is just to create a meta tag in the head. So here, you can say, well, if the user is signed in, and of course we're using devise logic and uh, methods here for this stuff, um, you'll have to adjust accordingly if you use something else or have written your own from scratch, but the same concept will apply. If the user is signed in, let's print out a meta tag. So we can use tag meta, um, for, for the helper here, and we can give it a name of, um, and if you're not familiar with the tag helper, which uh, probably you don't see too often, the tag helper is super simple. Um, you basically give it a tag that you want, the type, and then you can give it some other options. So you have options, and open, and escape is true, and those are the uh, four options that you can pass into it. So for example, you can create image tags or input tags or whatever, but this is kind of the lower level tag helper that image tag and all of those other ones, um, like form fields and stuff like that. This is kind of what it uses all behind the scenes. So those are helpers that kind of use this um, to do all of that. So um, a meta tag is really simple. We want to call it um, current user. So we'll say current user. And we'll give it some data attributes and we'll say ID is uh, current user dot ID. And that's it. That's all we really need. The presence of this uh, tag in the head should be enough for the JavaScript to look it up and then determine whether or not to initiate the action cable connection. So let's open up the browser again and make sure that this is displaying properly on the page. So let's inspect the source. Um, let's go back here, refresh, inspect the source, and here we don't have the user signed in, so let's log in. And now let's try viewing the source. So now you can see that we have a meta tag with the name of current user and the data attribute uh, for the ID. So this is working correctly, and now we can just adjust our JavaScript to detect that meta tag based on the name. So if you want to select that meta tag um, and you have jQuery, it's really simple. You just say meta name equals current user and that's it. So we'll pretty much just check to see if this exists or not and then wrap our action cable code with this line. Now the way we're going to solve this in the JavaScript land is really, really simple actually. 
you can set up your notifications channel to only uh, execute if that meta tag, uh, I'm gonna do double quotes there, meta name equals current user. And we just want to check if there's more than one of these on the page. And if there is, then that means the user is logged in and we will create that subscription. So we're only wrapping the subscriptions themselves because we could also uh, wrap the cable.js create consumer, but there's really no sense in that because Action Cable's JavaScript is actually smart enough not even to try to connect if there's no uh, channels defined. So if you have none of these subscriptions, then this will not even attempt to connect server side. So we can see that by going to our browser and refreshing as we're logged out. So I already logged out and you'll see in the logs that you won't get a connection being attempted to connect to action cable. So this is nice and it allows us to define those. And so if you have some that maybe everybody should always see, maybe you have a demo version or something like that, that every user should have a WebSocket connection. Well, in that case, then you could not wrap the uh, subscription in your JavaScript, but for the ones that do require the user to be signed in, this is an approach that you can use for that. And if you have none, then Action Cable doesn't even try, so that's super cool. Since this is probably gonna be a common issue for a lot of people, I wonder if we will see a new method in here like should connect or something like that, so that you could define a function that would get called when this create gets called, and then that way you could just return like your boolean here. So we could say return that, and that would be super nice because then you could just define that function and you could have it always run the create, but it could cancel itself. Um, and then that way you wouldn't have to wrap this code with if statements and kind of introduce more logic into your code. It'd be kind of nice to have a method like that. So maybe we'll see that. Uh, maybe it's a pull request or something that someone could add to Action Cable. I don't know what other people will think about that idea, but I think that the thing that we'll see often is that you're, when you're authenticating users for WebSockets, you're probably gonna see a lot of users who aren't logged in and are just continuously attempting to connect. And while that isn't a huge uh, load on the server by any means, those are very fast connections, it's still unnecessary work for it to even try. So I'd like to see that uh, maybe cleaned up a little bit better, but for now, the if statement approach works really, really well and isn't that hard to maintain. It's not too bad to look at. Um, and so, yeah, that is the approach that I would take for now. And potentially we can go refactor that or just add in a shim or something so that we can uh, adjust the way that this works ourselves. But until then, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode, found it useful, and we'll do some more action cable in the future. Talk to you then. Peace.